Greetings, 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 and greetings once again. Welcome to the Word of the Day. I'm George M. Matthews, the second senior pastor of New Life Interfaith Ministries and Calvary Resurrection Christian Church. It is a privilege and an honor to both be alive and to have this streaming connection with uh, those of you who will be coming on. Okay, it's 12.02 by my time. We've been on for a few seconds now with the intro, and I'm waiting to see people uh, who are looking forward to connecting with me. I'm looking forward to connecting with you. So as you're coming in, good Friday afternoon to you, at least where we are. Uh, Marcellus Scott is the first one in. Good afternoon, Marcellus. Uh, it's afternoon where we are, 12 noon Central Standard Time or thereabouts. And it's my prayer that everything is going well with you. Let's see who else do we have coming in. Carolyn Banks is joining us. Uh, Karen Harris-Williams, thank you for coming in. And Calvin, hello to you. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Deborah Lindsay, blessings to you. Daryl Terry, blessings to you. L.M. Jackson, blessings, blessings, blessings. Uh, to you all as you're coming in, this is the day the Lord himself has made specifically for you and to me. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You want the law, blessings to you. Tell your mother I said hello. Uh, Peggy Spence, a blessing to you. Carolyn Banks, you're ahead of the game. Shared, she's coming in, doing the right thing. So everyone should stop whatever you're doing and take a minute and press the word share. Uh, on your hemisphere, if you're on YouTube, press the word share. La La is coming in. Felicia Quixie, blessings to you. Uh, yes, as you're coming in, press the word share, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Um, the rest of the electronics will take care of itself, but it is important that you're sharing as you're coming in. Wanda Jones, good afternoon, pastor and believers. Blessings to you today. Yes, happy Friday, everyone. Someone else is saying. Uh, as you're coming in, the sharing is important. Uh, getting here is the first part of the game. Uh, the second half of the game is to share. Um, you just simply press the word share. Now, if you're over on YouTube, press the word share. You have three options. You can personate, designate specific persons to whom you'd like to have this message sent. And remember, this is the gift that continues to, to give. So if you send it that way uh, on YouTube, make sure you press subscribe. Doesn't cost you a dime, but it helps us to expand the channel. Uh, or you can copy the link. It, it, once you press the word share, it give you the option of copying the link. Then you can start, have your option of either starting your own YouTube, uh, excuse me, your message thread, or you can email, uh, start a thread by way of your email messaging. And then you can personate or designate as many names as you like, tag as many people as you like, and get them involved in our conversation today. I'm sure you're going to be blessed by what it is we have to say today. Who else do we have? To? Lawanda Miller, blessings to you. Are you in town or out of town, Lawanda? You're the traveling uh, believer of the air. <laughs> uh, Tanya Miles, blessings to you. Happy Friday back to you. Marsha Akoff to you. Uh, yes, let's rejoice. I have even something I'm going to add to that. And if you're over on the Facebook hemisphere, just make sure that you press the word share. Make sure that you're joining us by way of our ministry pages. I would really appreciate uh, celebrating your birthday. You're celebrating your birthday a long time, young lady. Um, but you're in Thailand. And well, happy travels to you and blessings to you. And um, enjoy uh, what uh, the Lord has blessed you to do. Uh, Pastor Judith is there. Happy, hello, family. Happy Friday. Blessings to you, Pastor Jay, and blessings to all who are in your consortium right now. And thank you, Carolyn Banks, you're leading the pack again. Not only did she press uh, share and initiate her sharing, she typed in that she shared to encourage the rest of you to share. I haven't seen anybody else sharing anything. Uh, uh, and then she typed in the, the topic that's going to be in the caption, but the faith comes by hearing it. So that literally means as many of your senses as you can involve in the process of faith, the better off you're going to be. So you're involving your seeing sense by way of reading the caption. Why is the church called the body of Christ? Question mark. And then I'm asking you to type in that same subject. Why is the church called the body of Christ? And so I want us to start off um, being very thankful today as well. So if you would, uh, throw some hands up, uh, hands of praise, or the prayer hands, or just type, thank you, Lord. There's a song, I think it's the best uh, worship song for praise to God. I just left the hospital a few minutes ago, and I was visiting someone in 
uh, SICU and uh, Amanda Pass. First of all, what struck my attention, I was at this hospital probably two months ago, and it seems like they're adding on to the hospital even more since then uh, to try to accomplish uh, ministering to so many sick people. Dennis Eccles, thank you, Lord. That's right. Sam Cunningham, blessings to you. Fabulous Friday back. Uh, that's right. Throw those phrase hands up. I'm going to, uh, E. Hale is joining us. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, to, I had to go to park on the parking deck and it's just on the side of the hospital where I was, there were, uh, five decks and then uh, five floors to the decks. And then to get in, come through one part of the hospital, they have to go through the crosswalk. All these are sick bodies that are there. And then to get to one floor, cross over to another floor, ride another set of elevators to get to the floor where I was going, right? And then you had your choice of the general hospital and then you had all of the other uh, breakout areas, and then to get to SICU. And I just, while I was praying for the individual there uh, to for whom I was there to visit, uh, I just couldn't help but be thankful. Um, there's a song written, I think it was written by a young woman who was with the Walter Hawkins singers. Uh, this might have been performed. It was performed by originally Yvette Flunder. And uh, she was with the Walter Hawkins singers. And I think they performed it uh, under the auspices of Love Alive, one, two or three. But it's a great song. Uh, and she says, tragedies are commonplace all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Uh, economy's downed, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Song always gets me. Folks without homes, living out in the streets, and the, the drug habit, some say they just can't beat. Muggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. And all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been me. Come on. Outdoors. Thank you. It could have been me with no food, or no clothes. Thank you. Or left alone without a friend or just another number who met a tragic end. Uh, but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be because every day by your power, you keep on, you keep on keeping me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And so those are pretty much the lyrics. And I want you as you're coming in for us to be today thankful. Yeah, things may not be going as you would uh, specifically desire but you have a lot for which you should be thankful. Uh, and like I said, it not, nothing gets my attention like visiting the hospital and seeing the number of people that are there. They are breathing, they uh, are animated, so to speak, yet they, they can't get up in many instances. They can't bathe themselves in many instances. They can't dress themselves in many instances. They can't have free communication and you and, but we have no right to complain is what i'm trying to say and uh, a few weeks ago i was trying to get this song together and i was going to share it then and the lord i've been praying that morning he said friday should be thankful fridays for the whole week that you were alive uh, i saw on the way over to this office um uh, there was an emergency unit as well as the fire department that was stopped in the middle of the road. Uh, there's a Smith Middle School as you're approaching the turns I need to make to get to the Calvary campus. And uh, right in the middle of the road, someone had had an episode and they were trying to, there was, this, it wasn't an, even an accident. This, it, you, it, you could tell it was something physical that happened. I said, Lord, thank you because you know, not only does God preserve your life, but then he protects other people uh, from having any kind of physical difficulty that would incapacitate your movement uh, or run into you or have an accident with you. And we have so many things that have gone what we would normally say as wrong. But in the midst of that, God is good. So uh, thankful Friday, lift your hands and tell him thank you. 
lift your voice and give him praise and lift those emojis and type out something that you're thankful that God has done for you and the consistent nature of God. Uh, the fact that you can almost count on it that every day you've been you you you're gonna get up the next morning. It's something you can't presume, but out of his goodness, yes. Uh, someone says, "Who's this, Peggy?" You're right, Pastor. Says taking care of my daddy. You can tell she's a daddy's girl. Whenever they use daddy instead of father, that's a daddy's girl. Uh, a girl dad on the other side. Everything uh, in Selma. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I have to be, to do everything for him. And see, that's that's a, just li someone living this out in real time. You know, many people don't even think about it. You, uh, I think about my parents every day. They were uh, 65 and 66. One was approaching his 66th birthday. My mother turned 66 and they passed away. And I think about people that have their parents for 80 and 90 and 100 years and 70 years be thankful, you know, and then parents that you don't have to do everything for be great. And see, it's out of that gratitude that governs your hearing heart where you can hear from God about giving, about sowing in the ministry and sowing it and being generous to other people's lives because there's so many things God has done for you. If nothing else that you can think of, Father, I thank you for life. And I thank you for movement. I had a workout early this morning and I was just thankful. I had no injuries. I was able um, to move the parts of my um, isolated workout. I was working ver the various parts of my body today. Uh, and I just, I could help but thank God that I was able to do that and handle the weight and not you know, have any kind of incident happen to me. And we're getting younger every day. God. And so they're just so much. maybe I'm taking too much time here, but I don't think so. Uh, but type it in there's something God has placed in your heart that only you're responding in your life for which you are grateful. So thank God, thank God a thousand times over. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to do this next Friday as well. But I want to get into our subject today. This premise in the form of a question. Why is church called the body of Christ. If you thought it, that is almost a play on words. How it is that human being can be born again and then codified or classified as the definite article, which means there are no others, the body of Christ. And someone should type that in the comment section. I am in the body of Christ. Or you can type it the body of Christ because in literal sense you are. So then, uh, thank you, uh, Sam Cunningham said she's thankful for favor. Uh, the battery died, but it was covered in the warranty. It says those kinds of things, Lord, that you didn't have to additional money for, and you didn't have to, you weren't stranded somewhere where you couldn't get the assistance and you were in uh, in climate conditions. Uh, so be thankful. Yeah, daddy's 87. He can't see, has cancer, and because of chemotherapy, can't remember how to get to the restroom. You helping me. Thank you, Pastor. Well, thank you for sharing that because he's still alive. You still have him. Um, you know, I don't have my parents, but I think about him every day and several times during the day. They were good people. So it's good to be alive and it's good to see what God um, is doing so we might be having a few slowing difficulties here. It looks like the camera's frozen But I'll keep talking and the Lord to clear it up and get us where we need to to be so uh, our objective today is to to understand The born-again experience to really get it that born again Christ Doing Uh, that we understand that the body of Christ, that we have the affinity that Christ had when he was in the earth. Um, think of it. First Thessalonians 5, verse 20. Now may the very 
He sanctify you, another word for save. So as he saves us, here's the intent uh, to save us spirit, soul, and body. Let your whole spirit, your whole soul, and body be blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This means that if you are body of Christ, if you're born again, you all have God in you, spirit, soul, and body. Is your spirit has been part of you or the you, the end? Uh, has now made of heavy live inside of you. Then your soul is being renewed. That means that God is giving you knowledge to help we as to hit level of thinking so that you can be able to see and believe that Jesus' blood paid for me to have a new image believers. Really your body, that is your physical body, your fit the physical Realm, the physical part of you should have Jesus like experiences. Think of it now, you are the body of Christ. So, everyone type that I am the body of Christ, or I'm in the body of Christ. So, if you're the body, if you're the, the physical expression in the earth realm of Jesus, what should your body or the natural parts of you uh, reflect? And so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us, therefore, if any man is in Christ, and that is the key preposition, in Christ. So now to be the body of Christ means that I am somehow spiritually in Christ. And if I'm in Christ, this literally means that spirit, soul, and body, all of my spirit is in Christ or is Christ. All of my soul is Christ. And then all of my natural being, the natural aspects of me are, are Christ. And so then he says, if any man be in Christ, prepositionally speaking, he is, listen to this, a new creature or a new species of being. Uh, nothing like this has ever existed in the earth before where you could have a natural man born again, born of the spirit and have Jesus living inside of him. And the best the apostle Paul could describe this position as being is, is, is that of being a new creature, spirit, soul, and body. Now, Jesus referred to this in St. Matthew chapter six, verse, uh, you begin at verse 13, the scripture says, Jesus came in. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So now that Jesus is the son of the living God, he says, I want you to understand what this means. He says to them, he said, listen, um, you're Peter. And upon this rock, I build my church. What is that church? It's the, what is the building of the church? The church is the body of Christ. And so backing away from that, he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. So Jesus, think of it now. And here's, here's where we are. Jesus is building his body. I, 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 I thought the body and the head of the body go together. How do you have a head that needs to build its body. I'm going to add a few words for clarity. I believe when Jesus said, upon the rock of revelation truth, I will build my church. Literally what he was saying is, I have to build born again believers to now understand who they are. I'm building the church. I'm building these believers to understand their connectivity with me, the head, that you can't separate the head from the body that all of what is in the head is in the body and all of that which is in the body is in the head. So now he's building us with understanding to, to get this. Jesus prayed in St. Matthew 6, 10. He said, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what was Jesus saying? He was saying to his disciples, he said, when you pray, 
pray after this manner, because here is the area that you're going to need to be built up in. Once you're born again, you're going to have to uh, come into a, a revelation knowledge of understanding that I, Christ, am your head. You are the head's body or the body of the head. And everything that the head possesses, you now possess. Now, I'm going to tell you, you never saw a poor Jesus. No, you didn't. If you did, you read the wrong Bible. The scripture says that the father arranged for the son, Jesus, to have gold, frankincense, and myrrh dropped off to him by, by what could have been as many as 100 magi or wise men at the site of his birth. So it wasn't that Jesus was poor in terms of the reason that he had uh, was born in a, in, a, in, a, in a stable or in a barn. There was no room in the inn. Uh, I did some studies that it said that Jerusalem could have had as many as a million people there uh, to celebrate um, the Passover. And so when they came, Jesus uh, being uh, carried by his biological mother, Mary, there was just no room. There was no room in the inn. You don't go to an inn, a uh, hotel, if you don't have any money. And Jesus had that. Not only that, but you never saw a sick Jesus. Now you're his body. You're, you're the, the same body that he had while he was in the earth now constitutes who you and I are in him. You never saw a sick Jesus. You never saw Jesus with a headache. You never saw Jesus with a cold. You never saw Jesus with a virus. You never saw Jesus um, with lack or sickness, nor did you see even when people died around him, he raised them up if it was the will of the Father. When people were sick around him, he healed them. Uh, he was always the provider. So that means he was with, never without provision himself. And he now says, you are that body. You have taken the place of who he was in his fullness, spirit, soul, and body while he was in the earth. And he has to build us to understand that. And this is why it is so important to have revelation knowledge. And one uh, connects himself or herself to revelation knowledge by way of the teaching that they are able to receive. Now, I'm setting you up because I want you to go here. Uh, why, the body of Christ has a goal. God has a goal for making us the body of Christ. What is the goal? The goal is that we, as Jesus's body, being built up with revelation knowledge, demonstrate what the kingdom of God in its totality look like in the earth, what it means to walk in prosperity, what it means to walk in health, what it means to walk in it with a stable mind and a stable disposition, so forth and so on. So why is this New Testament church referred to as the body of Christ? I think one thing we need to get in mind and keep in mind once we get it, uh, the body of Christ is to provide a clear understanding of what it means to, un to walk in the revelation of 1 John 4, 17, the B portion. The scripture says, as he, Jesus is, so are we in this present world. So that means as he is, whoever Jesus is, totally, spirit, soul, and body, we are that same reflection uh, in the earth. So the scripture uses the phrase, the body of Christ, to identify that the New Testament believer, those who are born again, are in oneness and unity with Christ. Oneness and unity with Christ. Uh, when people believe in Jesus' death for the sins of the world and his resurrection, they are joined to Christ. And that's the mystery of being a you become a member of Christ's body. So uh, please type that in there. I'm born again. I'm a member of Christ's body. You're the reflection of who Jesus is uh, in the earth. Here are a few scriptures. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch these very quickly. Uh, seems like we may be having some challenges uh, with the uh, connection to stream, but that's all right. If I was the devil, this is what I would do as well. Again, I am in the body of Christ and it's my reflection. So now ask yourself the question, is my life a reflection? This means, if the answer is no, Jesus is still building me. 
<laughs> there's much building to be done. Does Jesus's kingdom look like my life? Does my life look like his kingdom? Can people look at me, spirit, soul, and body and say, wow, this is what Jesus would look like if were he to still be here in the earth realm. Our lives, spirit, soul, and body need to be built by Jesus himself so that we reflect a totality of who he is. And this is the only thing that Satan is coming against the believer uh, to, to sort of uh, try to root out. He never wants you to be built up to understand you're the body of Christ. You, uh, uh, In other words, you can be called the church. You can be called born again. All of those terms are synonymous with being the body, the definite article, the body of Christ. Here it is in scripture. Uh, Colossians chapter two, verse 12. We are believers in his resurrection. We're joined to Christ in his death and resurrection. Colossians chapter two, verse 12, New Living Translation, for you are buried with Christ. Glory to God. When you were baptized and with him, uh, you were raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Verse 13, you were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature, uh, you were cut, uh, your, excuse me, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away, not yet. But when you were born again, your sinful nature, now you say, I still sin. I still make some, some mistakes. Yes, you do. But in the eyes of God, through the working of God's mighty power in the realm of the spirit, God has already forgiven you past, present and future sins and has cut that away from you. So that's not the way you're, you're not seen as a mere mortal. You're seen as a resident in Christ. You're seen as the body of Christ. Here it is. Then God made you alive. Then, see, he's making a comparison. Who you were before Christ. And now that you are in Christ, God made you alive with Christ. For he forgave all your sins. That means he washed your sins away. He anticipated the future sins. He knew about your present and current sins. And he already was aware of your past sins, all of which he washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. This was necessary for us to qualify to be called the body of Christ. To be called the body of Christ means that we match the head who is Christ which means we, God no longer sees you as sick, uh, poverty stricken. He no longer sees you as sinful. He no longer sees you as cursed. He no, all he can see you as is a match in body for whoever the head is. And it happens to be his son. I hope I'm making this plain. I'll just take a few more minutes. Watch this. It is common for the New Testament believer to refer to New Testament exactly, to refer to believers as being in Christ. And this is where we have to be built up is to understand we are in Christ. Uh, when I was praying for this person earlier this morning, I, I just spoke it out in the spirit realm that, and I don't have to pray long and I definitely don't have to scream because I'm in Christ. He he and I are one. He is the head. I'm his body. So why am I screaming? And then it's unbecoming to do that in a hospital situation. Anyway, I think some people have not been built up and they think they have to hoop and holler and scream and moan and groan because they have never understood you're in Christ. He's your head. My head does not have to scream to my legs to work. They work in harmony. They work in unity. Uh, the head thinks it the, the, and sends a message to my legs and they move. Ephesians 1, 4, the New Living Translation, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ, in Christ, to be holy and without fault in his eyes. That's not something you're doing on your own. That's something Jesus did for you through and by way of his finished work. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. We're in the family of God. Um, through Jesus Christ, by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Now, that was Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. In those days, when uh, before you came 
into Christ before God's power baptized you into Christ before Christ became your head. When your head was your, your literal head was your head. You were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises God made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. Past tense, ED. In the past, this was, this was you and me before Christ became our head. But now you have been united with Christ. But now, and we're being built up to understand, I'm in the body. Man, look. There's nothing I can't do. There's nothing that God has said about me that I can't achieve. There's nothing I can't have. It's I'm in Christ. I'm his body. I'm his literal body in the earth. I am the representation in the earth of who my head is, Jesus, in heaven. But now, everyone should type that in there, but now, but now, but now, but now, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far, you were, past tense, you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's all the time. I wanted to go through uh, Romans chapter six. I'll pick that next time. We're being to understand we there there'll never be great done by the body of Christ until we're built up to understand we are in him the power of who we are in him who I am in Christ is not who I am in terms of my flesh who I am naturally who I am from a physical disposition in the physical perspective who I am in Christ is another level altogether. And this is why we worship differently. This is why we praise differently. This is why we praise at all. We worship at all. This is the reason that we give as we do. We're spirit led in terms of our activities and actions. This is the reason that you you have faith at all because you understand you are Christ's body in the earth. So this means, this the, 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 the what did Jesus say? All with men, things are not possible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible to him that believes. Believes what? Believes in, first of all, the finished work of Jesus Christ, through which God baptized me as the body of Christ. Glory to God. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share your word with these wonderful, wonderful people. Thank you for all the things you've done for us and you are in the consistent nature of doing. Father, I lift my hands to you to thank you for how it is you're building us up to understand who the weight and the magnitude of who we truly are in Jesus Christ. I give you praise. I lift my hands to you, Father. I lift my hands to you. I praise you because of this revelation and understanding that we are in the body of Christ. Now say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ, who is King of my life, Lord of my life, and Savior of my life. Through him, I am born again into his body. Jesus is my head, and I follow his instructions so that I can receive the inheritance that was laid up for me. I want you to keep dreaming. I want you to dream big because you're the body of Christ. Jesus showed you that, the power of it. He was preparing to go into Jerusalem. He told Jesus of his disciples, he says, go over into the next city and tell, he'll see a man carrying a pitcher, P-I-T-C-H-E-R, of water. Stop him and tell him that you have a room and uh, my master needs it to eat Passover. Watch this supernaturally. How did Jesus in another city know what was going on in the next city? He's supernatural and he had supernatural provisions. Did they have to show up with money? No, they had the favor of God because they were the type, the reference of the body of Christ. And he says, besides all of that, you're going to see a mule. This is transportation, housing one, the room, uh, transportation two. He said, you'll see a, 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 an ass coat upon which no man has ever ridden. That means it was not previously. I don't thank God for previously on vehicles. I don't have anything against that. But Jesus was saying, you're in the body of Christ. And as I am, so are you, First John 4, 17b. He said, go and tell the man, the master. If he, he catches you untying the beast, tell him the master has need of him and bring him to me. And this is the beast that Jesus rode into Jerusalem uh, upon 
as he was making his triumphal entry into um, the city. Don't forget um, to text me 94000. If you prayed that prayer with me for the first time or you getting people born again, I have a packet of information that will help them to understand the born again process. Thank you, Pastor, for that awesome word. I was truly blessed. Uh, have a God awesome day. I receive that and weekend blessings to you. Blessings. Thank you all. Uh, Rebecca Austin, good afternoon. You know, we're finishing up. Thank God for electronics because you can hear this as many times as you need to. And this is the area where we need to be built up. And this is the area that's going to make or break us as believers. A uh, powerful message. You're strong in the Lord. I receive it. And in the power of his might, I receive it all. Glory to God. Yes, I agree with it. Glory to God. God bless you, sir, um, for this great word from God. Gregory, us, Pastor Gregory Hopkins out of uh, Nashville, I want to say. Nashville, Tennessee. Did I get it right, Pastor? Uh, great church, um, great people of God. Uh, thank God for you all. I'll read your comments. Don't forget, I said I wasn't going to get involved this time at the church, but uh, during the silence of our friends, we've been dealing with the thank you, Ann. Love you so very much. Thank you, Miss Minnie Lee. Love you so much. God bless you. I receive all of that. I receive it. I receive it. Lala, I receive it. God bless you. I receive it. Um, there's a there's a document. I say a document, but it's really uh, what they used to call a handbill. Yes, Nashville. Blessings to Nashville, Pastor Hopkins. Give your wife my my best and uh, bless your wonderful church. Um, but it's a double-sided uh, brochure, and it talks about what's next. A question is asked, uh, the 2022 Political Forum. Uh, so that's the New Life Church. Again, we'll be dealing with... Uh, the, the politics of our area. If you remember, uh, Jesus interacted with Pilate. Pilate was the governor sent there by the emperor of Rome. <laughs> so that means uh, a spiritual man was dealing with pol politics. Uh, Paul had to talk to uh, Felix, who was king, and then Agrippa, another king, uh, governor, king, and then he goes on to speak to the emperor of Rome to give him the message of Jesus Christ. It was political. Uh, the, 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 the king, the psalmist, the sweet psalmist of Israel, as the book of Samuel uh, closes, introducing De David at his death, who was the second king of Israel. He's written the largest, one of the, if not the largest book of the Bible, but definitely the largest praise and worship book uh, of the Bible by David, who was a king. All the kings who were appointed, uh, hands were laid on them by the, by, the, by the prophets. Who told you we were not supposed to be involved in political affairs? If the salt has lost its savor, the ability to influence the world, wherewith shall it be salty? Is then good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot, uh, the feet of men. So, uh, because of our political uh, involvements and because of our social aspect for our ministry, I said we would go invest the money to get the, uh, that's right, plus we're the light of the political world. You're exactly right, uh, Brother Said, who is another fellow minister, activist in this area. I have a lot of respect for Brother Said and his commitment to his calling. You're exactly right, sir, and I couldn't agree with you more. Yes, Anointed Life, that's the name of the church there in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Anointed Life Fellowship Church. Great church, had the opportunity to preach there not long ago. Um, and so we will be dealing with this on Sunday, August the 14th at 4 o'clock p.m. This is our fourth or fifth political forum, and I just thought we need to get all the candidates in one place. And so we'll be dealing with, the, this is a municipal election, the mayor, the mayoral race for the city of Bessemer, uh, the Bessemer City Council, the school board of Bessemer of the Bessemer school system, then the Jefferson County Sheriff. These people on the other side are attempting to roll back all the aims God has given us as a people. Um, the first African American uh, sheriff of Jefferson County, and the person of Mark Petway, who's been doing a stellar job. But the other side has come up with. Uh, who is it? Um, I won't call any names because names give life and I don't want that situation to be overturned. But I think this is probably an Antifa, I think, um, Theresa Thomas uh, personnel who's running for 
uh, uh, running against our, our, our sheriff. For the first time in history, this cradle of the civil rights movement as a, a person of color who is a man of God, a minister actually, fellow church, I know his pastor well, um, leader of the sheriff's department. And then, okay, our fourth political forum, Theresa Thomas has reminded me, uh, since 2010. So we've, we've been doing this a while. It's a costly endeavor. Our team has to go through some things, but it's just worth it. Uh, QAnon, I said Antifa, but QAnon, yes, thank you. A QAnon candidate running against the sheriff. Now you go and figure that. And this tells you how deep and steep racism is and why we have to vote. And I'm taking an extra few minutes. The same holds true for the district attorney of the Bessemer cutoff of Jefferson County. Uh, we've got a man of color who is the overall district attorney, uh, Danny Carr for Jefferson County, but then the Bessemer cutoff, we have Lanise Washington, the first woman, first uh, black woman, uh, African-American woman, and then the first woman of color. So she's uh, 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 as a first in three lanes. She's done a stellar job as well. And I just, I feel like I've got to keep people informed. I mean, I, uh, y'all pray for us. I mean, we get thrown under the bus in a lot of respects, but God is our strength, our light and our salvation. So Pastor Jay is pulling all this together with our political action committee with Elder Thomas, Theresa Thomas and her knowledgeable self. We also have the um, legislative district, state legislative district, district 56 and 57 as well as the uh, Yolanda Flowers, who is the Democratic representative, person of color. We've had her on both campuses, woman of color, running against the uh, incumbent governor of Alabama. Uh, thank God. Thank God for the strides. So I'm, I'm supporting her. Uh, then, of course, the U.S. District Senate race, and we'll probably have representatives. That's going to be set Sunday, August 14th. And if you come by the ministry or any of our campuses, you can pick up one of these little cards and get it out to as many people as, as you can. That's four o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Till then, don't forget. Uh, yeah, yeah. And another one. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Uh, we've got all kind of opposition, brother said. And another one that's not of us running for uh, Mark Petway's job, who is the uh, sheriff of Jefferson County. So a lot of prayer, a lot of believing and a lot of support. And most of all, go vote. Your vote is your voice and your voice is the voice of God. And so we're, we're praying and we're taking a role in that respect as we as we have. And God gives us the strength and the resources to do so. So that'll be at the uh, Central Campus uh, on that Sunday. Uh, don't forget to join us tomorrow, our television broadcast for this region. I feel like I'm being too long, but I'll cut it off here. Thank you all for being so faithful. Um, yes, we must stay informed. I'm right with you, Beverly Thompson. Um, tomorrow, 1 o'clock p.m., the TBN affiliate WTJP. Then again, Saturday Seekers will be there for about an hour, hour 15 minutes, 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That service is not streamed, but it's a good service, I'll tell you. And uh, people are being blessed as they're coming. We're getting, um, I won't say filled up, but I mean, it's, it's growing every week. And so I think we just have to do something different every time. Uh, then again, Sunday morning, we'll stream live, but that service is a good service. We have room for you, 9 o'clock a.m. on the New Life campus. And then, of course, uh, we will also deal with our Calvary campus. We rush out of there, dash over to Calvary campus at 11 o'clock a.m. It's going to be a good time and a good day on Sunday. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless you, Pastor Jay, and I are praying for you, family. We love you all so very much. You all keep interacting, and we'll see you the next time. Don't forget uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any person is in Christ, that individual is a new creation. Old things from God's perspective about you have passed away, and behold, everything about you has become new. Until next time, we love you, and God bless each of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're the body of Christ. Blessings and peace.